Hey guys, it's Robin, R. Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Today, I want to show you how to make a DPN cozy, a double point needle cozy, or a little pouch. This is a knitting project that I've been working on. I haven't touched it in a while. It's for an afghan. And I am knitting it on, I'm knitting it back and forth on straight needles, but I'm using DPNs because I don't have that many stitches on it. And I like to store it inside my DPN Cozy. And it has these little snaps to keep everything secure. And what it does is it keeps your project safe. It keeps the stitches from falling off of your needles. It keeps everything secure. And when you reach into your bag and pull it out, you can pull it out by the Cozy and you won't accidentally pull out the needle and pull all the stitches off and have a big mess. I can also keep such, I have such a small ball of scrap yarn that I'm using because this, as you can see, is a scrappy yarn project. I don't only play with scrap fabrics, but I play with scrap yarn also. And I want to show you how to make this today. But if you don't knit and you don't have a friend who knits, there are other things that you can use your cozy for. Now, what if you have your most favorite pen and pencil that you like to keep in your backpack or in your purse or in your desk and they always get misplaced the kids are always grabbing them you can never find them you can go ahead and put them in here you can make your these cozies at whatever size you need to fit your project maybe you want to keep this with your bible or in a little bag or something like that when you go to the library you can put a highlighter in there and it's just a little way to carry all of your favorite you're not going to carry all of your pens and pencils, of course, but you can carry a couple. And depending on how deep you make it, it will determine on how many you can put in there. And if you don't want to use it for that, maybe you're like me and you like to use the reusable straws. I have a stainless steel one that I drink for my regular water and stuff. And then I have one for my morning smoothie. What if I'm going out to Starbucks with friends or I'm at the office or I'm going out to the park or something and I want to carry extra straws with me. Maybe I want to put them in my backpack or something. I put three snaps in this one because it's so long because my stainless straw has a bend in it. You could put your straws in here. You could put paint brushes in here, anything that you happen to need that you want to just carry a couple around and have them in a nice little secure pouch. I'm gonna give you the basic idea and the measurements for the one that I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make another one for my double point needles for some socks, or maybe for a sweater sleeve or whatever I happen to be working on. And then you guys can adjust these. I'll give you the basic formula, as I said, and you guys can adjust it based on your needs. So what we're gonna need is we're gonna need a piece of fabric for our outer fabric. We need something for our lining. I have a lightweight fusible on the inside Ignore these lines. I was going to use this fusible for something else and I decided not to. So instead of wasting it, I saved it. I'm using fabric that you can't see those lines through, so it's going to be perfectly fine. I am using cam snaps, so I'll need my cam snap tool and my cam snaps. You can find these easily on Amazon. They come in a variety of different colors and different sets. I like to buy all the white and the black. That way they work for whatever project but I have bought the colored ones in the past. I've got green, I actually have two different color greens on here. So I just put the darker greens on the end and I put the lighter green on the center and matched it on both sides so you can mix and match your colors. Now the interfacing I'm using, I picked this up at Joann's. It's a P44F. It's a very lightweight interfacing and it's actually very inexpensive. It's usually about 99 cents a yard, but it does go on sale for their 40, 50, 60% off, or if you use a coupon so you can get a really good deal on it. I tend to buy the whole bolt or as much as left on a bolt when I'm there. Now, if you can't find any interfacing at the store, you can make this without. It just adds a little extra structure and durability to your project because without it, I use the lightweight so it, it is a little bit floppy. I don't like it too stiff, but you can use any weight interfacing that you have. 
Otherwise, you can use a sturdier fabric, maybe a denim one on the outside or a linen or some type of upholstery or outdoor fabric. This is a really great scrap project, so whatever you happen to have, it'll be fine. You can go ahead and piece it, but they're such small projects. Maybe if you wanna have a piece of fabric on the front and a piece of fabric on the back, you can make squares. But like I said, they are pretty small, so you're not gonna be able to use really large squares. Most places are about out of interfacing right now. This is June, 2020, but they're starting to stock back up on them. So if you happen to have any scraps around, you can go ahead and also piece them together. If you don't have enough for them, you can go ahead and put a piece down here and a piece there and just kind of build it together. You just wanna make sure that they're close together or a little bit apart. You don't wanna overlap them because you will be able to feel that extra little ridge that it provides. Okay, I'm gonna make mine for seven inch double point needles. So I've gone ahead and I cut my outside fabric at eight and a half inches by four and a half inches. But for my lining fabric, instead of cutting it exact same size, I went and cut it a quarter inch smaller in the depth part of it. That way when I put my lining in, I won't have a whole bunch of fabric that's bunched up down at the bottom. You see how nice and smooth that fits in there nicely? I don't have a whole lot of extra wrinkles everywhere. It's because I went ahead and I cut my lining fabric at eight and a half by four and a quarter. So now the basic formula for this is if I'm gonna be putting in seven inch needles, I'm gonna add an inch and a half to the width. So when I went and made mine for my straws, I went ahead and made this 11 and a half and I went six and a half inches deep due to the fact of my little bendy straw here. If I was just putting these in, I could go ahead and stick with the four and a half inches, but I had to account for this curve. This curve is two inches, so I went ahead and I just added two inches to my baseline formula. I will put a whole bunch of measurements down below in the description box. I have them for six inch needles, seven inch needles, eight inch needles, and I will also include the one that I have for my straw holders. Now our first step is going to be get all our fabrics cut out, go ahead and press your fusible on the back of your fabrics if you're able to use the fusible. Then we're gonna fold them and stitch them right sides together and we wanna stitch just down on these short lengths and on my outside piece, I'm gonna stitch down both sides. I'm gonna back tack at the beginning and the end just to make sure everything's nice and secure and it doesn't come apart when I'm working on it. Now, if you were making a bunch of these, you can go ahead and put it in an assembly line and go ahead and put the next one in like this, but we're gonna make the lining a little different, so I'm gonna do that separate. Just make sure everything's lined up nicely at the top Use pins or clips if you want. You can take it over and press it. I like it to have that little bit of a rounded edge. I will press it later, but I don't want a really crisp edge on it right now, but that's totally up to you. I stitched both ends with a quarter inch seam allowance. I stuck with a 2.0 stitch length. That's because when I put my machine there, it automatically goes there for quilting. It's a nice tight little stitch. You can go ahead and bump it up to two and a half if you'd like. Now when we do the lining, I'm gonna do the first side just like we did on the outside fabrics. Line it up nicely, little back stitch. Now when I do this side, I wanna leave a nice opening down here at the folded end. I'm gonna stitch down about a third of the way to a half at the furthest. We're going to be turning this right side out through this hole, so you wanna make sure you're not leaving it teeny tiny. Just go nice and slow so you don't speedy Gonzales all the way to the end. So that's about three quarters of an inch to an inch, really close to an inch mark. As I said, as long as you're able to get something in there, your hemostats, your finger to pull that out, you'll be okay. Yeah. 
If you'd like, you can trim up a little bit on the edges here on your seam allowance. I wouldn't go very small of a seam allowance. I wouldn't go down to an eighth of an inch. I would just take a bare little sliver off. I wanna have a nice amount of seam allowance still because I don't wanna to have to worry about that fraying or coming apart at all in my project. If I take off just a little bit, it's gonna reduce the bulk. You can trim the corner a little bit Or if this is too much for you and you think it's going to be an issue, like you don't want to make your seam allowance too narrow, just don't trim it at all. Now on this one, I will go ahead and trim it on the side that is stone all the way closed. But on this side, I'm going to go ahead and leave it just like this. I'm going to take this over to my pressing station and I want to just fold back that seam allowance right to my stitching line. You can really just do it with your fingers here if you'd like. I do it one way. Then I bring it back the other way. Give it a nice little finger press. And that's gonna help when you get to the point of turning it right side out and stitching up that little turning hole. It'll make it easier for you to turn it under. If you're lucky, it'll automatically turn under for you. Now, since our lining is just that quarter of an inch smaller than our outer fabric, what I want to do is I want to turn my lining right side out. Okay, don't worry about that little hole there because that's the one we put in for turning it. And I'm going to put it inside my outer fabric. If I tried to put my outer fabric inside my lining, since it's that quarter inch longer, it'd be a little bit harder to line up the top nice and even. I'm going to start over here on the sides. I'm going to put one seam allowance one way. So my line, my outer fabric is to the right. And my lining fabric is to the left. Make sure everything lines up nice and neat. Put a pin or a clip in it. Then I'd spin around, do the other side. Make sure I've got the seam allowances going in opposite directions so they nest nicely. Line up the top nice because we're going to go ahead and do a quarter inch stitch all the way around the outside rim here. And I give it a little bit of a pop, make sure everything's tucked in nicely, and I could find that center point real easy this way. Just kind of wiggle it up, pin or clip, do the same thing on this side. You don't have to be exactly in the center, it just, when you put your fingers in and you pull it like this, it tightens all of your fabrics so that they go together nicely and you can just grab them and you know they're even and they're not gonna be off sides here at all. Then you can just pull it tight here, split the difference. and just work your way around. I do like to put extra pins and clips in like this, just so I know everything's held nice and secure and I won't get any type of ripples or wonky spots when I'm stitching this all together. And by pulling on the two of these, it just helps it line up. You can make sure they're lined up at the top and put your clip in. need to find a little space to get my sewing machine in there. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch around the top all the way around completely, not leaving any openings because we're going to turn it through the lining still. If you didn't want to turn it to the lining, you can go ahead and leave yourself an opening here. And then afterwards, you'll have to close it and top stitch it. Now on my original one, I did do some top stitching here. I believe that's how I turned it through the top opening. But this one, I just went and let my snaps hold everything together. There's no top stitching, which means I didn't have to have that perfectly straight line going all around. I didn't have to worry about, is my thread matching? Is it visible? Did I get any wonky wobbles anywhere? So I don't have to worry about it being perfectly straight. The snaps are gonna hold it all in place. So if you have to wash it, I know I don't have to worry about any of these areas coming all crooked and undone. My snaps are gonna hold all the top layers on both sides together nicely. So whichever is more comfortable for you, whether it's the lining or the top, 
quarter inch, I'm sticking with my 2.0. You're just going to have to pull it around, maybe tuck the corner under a little. Just make sure you're only sewing through this top edge. Worry about this one little section a couple inches in front of your needle and let the rest just do whatever it wants to do. Your clips and pins are holding it in place so you don't have to worry about it. The hardest part, well the most awkward part is when you get to the corner seams here. Just go slow. If you want to make a bunch of these for friends or family or knitting friends, after you make a couple you'll find a good groove and you'll be able to speed right through it. Do a little back stitch at the end. Make sure you're securing your threads. I like to turn it to where the lining's on the outside. That way I can easily find where my hole is. You could use hemostats and reach in and grab it, but I'll just grab this one corner. It's the corner that's closest and I'll just start pulling it from the bottom. Turning anything the right side out can get a little fiddly. Pop your thumb in there and push this lining around on the inside. And or if you have some hemostats or really long tweezers, you could put them in. Go all the way to the opposite side I'm gonna reach on and grab onto my outer fabric so I can pull that through. And then it's easy enough to just turn it inside out or right side out, however you wanna look at it. I have my little crochet hook that I like to use to just gently push these corners so that they're nice. I'm not gonna worry about the lining ones because we don't wanna push them out because we're gonna be putting them back inside. So I do wanna have my outside look really nice. You can take this over to your iron and give it a nice press so that your outside looks really good. And here is my little spot where I need to turn it. So I just pop those edges in. I finger pressed them so that there's that nice little edge so I could see where to put them in at. Now you can go ahead and stitch this closed by hand with a ladder stitch. It's just a nice little spot. Or you can have some matching thread or I'm just gonna use white thread. I'm gonna start on the inside here and then work my way this way. You can start on the edge, but I find it's easier to get started where I have extra fabric instead of off of the fabric. You can even use some of that little heat and bond tape and put that in there and seal it up. Now I'm going really close to the edge, somewhere between an eighth and a sixteenth away from the edge just enough to catch both without really getting too far into the lining. Back stitching at the beginning and end. You just wanna make sure any of your stitching that it doesn't go back that way into your outer fabric. Make sure everything's lined up and all of the edges line up nicely here. Trim my threads. Now you're just going to open it up a little bit so that you could put your lining on the inside. Trim any extra little threads I have there. Take it over to your iron, to your pressing station, and you wanna just kinda roll this edge so that you have your outer fabric on the outside and your lining fabric on the inside and give it a good press all the way around. Press the whole thing, make it look nice and neat. 
There we go. Just by making that lining that's that little bit shorter by that quarter inch is such a small amount, but it makes everything just lay in there so nicely. We don't have any extra wrinkled fabric anywhere. You can see I got these corners. They go all the way into the corner. Everything's pressed nice. Now we have to do our cam snaps. I'm going to link to another video that I've done in the past about cam snaps that might have a little bit more information than I'm going to show you today. To mark it on these, what I want to do is I want to come in one and a quarter from the side and I want to go a half inch down. I have this nice little two and a half inch square that works good. I'm just going to use a regular, this is a Sharpie pen. I'm going to make just a little dot. When I put my snap on, the snap is going to cover up my little mark. So whatever type of marking tool you want, you can go ahead and use it for that. Now, if you don't have any cam snaps, you can go ahead and put a little Velcro in here. I would just put a couple pieces or you can run it all the way down. Or you can do those snaps that you hand sew on. That'll work also. So an inch and a quarter from the outside and a half inch down from the opening. And I'm just going to make a little dot. I'm just going to make it on one side because I'm going to use my awl and I'm going to poke all the way through. They're nice and sharp. It comes with your cam set. I can poke it all the way through. I like to do it on my cutting table, but if you poke it all the way straight through, I give it a little bit of a twist as I'm poking it through and it'll come right out the other side. So you'll have the hole on the other side and it'll mark it there. Or you can just go ahead and mark both all four spots with a pen. Now cam snaps come in three different parts. There is the pokey end, and we're gonna need two of those for each side. These are gonna be on the outside. And each side, you're gonna need to have one of the male side with the snap sticking up. And on the other side, we're gonna have the female side, which has the divot so that the snap can go into that little hole there, that recessed part. We're just going to put the pokey part in. And on this one, I'm going to put the male on the top. This little round part here is going to go into this little black cup. And it holds everything in there nicely. Make sure it's all lined up and just give it a squeeze. I like to rotate it and give it another squeeze. Rotate it the other way just to make sure it's in there nice. Sometimes it's not fully squeezed into the fabric and there's a little space. And that just makes it a little feel loose when you're going ahead and snapping it. So now this one has the male side. So on the opposite side of it, I'm going to put this one in. And I'm going to use the female or the little cup part. Double check to make sure that these are the two that are going to go together. There you go. Always check for that nice satisfying clicky. Now it's nice if you're gonna put the mail on this side to put it on the same one here. I didn't do that on these, I got mixed up. So this one I have the mail on the bottom and this one I have the female. So I did the two outer ones the same and I did the inside one different. I figured, okay, it works. It's a different color. It can snap differently. They're going to work no matter what. And I don't think anyone's really going to pay that much attention to how you put your snaps in. As long as they work and they're lined up nicely, they're going to be happy. But it is nice to have them all going in the same direction, same way. Amazon has a nice starter set for these. There's several different listings. If you just search for camp snaps, you can buy them on places other than Amazon also. 
but you can get all the tool and there's a special little other eyelet thing or something and you get the all and the directions and there's videos on how to use them there you go and just put your knitting project in you can use holiday fabric you know obviously you can use any type of fabric you want that would work for you or your friends and family and their knitting will be nice and safe and secure so if you have any questions please leave them down at the comments thank you for hanging out with me today and i'll see you next time bye